The Congregation of Holy Cross is a relatively new religious community in the history of the church, considering the 2,000 year span of history since the birth of Jesus. Our community was founded only 170 years ago, in the early 19th century, in the wake of the French Revolution. At the time, cataclysmic change imbued the Western culture, not only through violent revolutions, but even more significantly, through momentous shifts in thinking. A cultural phenomenon was born, the Age of Enlightenment. Human genius, thought now to be liberated from the restraints of religious superstition, promised to unleash and harness the Earth's energies for producing an abundant harvest of material prosperity. The dawn of industrialization, growth in the trade of commerce, and wondrous new discoveries of the physical sciences set the Western world on an emboldened course of de-Christianization. All of these advances seem to dissipate any need for a belief in God. Faith in the supernatural was slowly giving way to widespread secularism. Trust in absolute reason as the key for untangling life's mysteries diminished confidence in the power of God's grace to aid and support us. Human dreams of power, wealth, and pleasure captivated our imagination like never before. And although the human species benefited enormously through the successes of these revolutions, the burden of human suffering still lingered and always will. In the words of Charles Dickens, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. For the church it was the worst of times in that many people were abandoning religious faith and in some places religious belief was violently oppressed. In France a reign of terror persecuted believers, hunting them down as criminals. Many were put to death. Churches and schools were destroyed. Christians were forbidden to assemble. But it was also the best of times in that a new and fresh movement of the Holy Spirit began to blow throughout the church. God's love would not and could not be suppressed. Believers joined together, at first secretly, to find strength and hope in their common faith. They were determined to initiate a new evangelization, an age of renewal for the church. Among these leaders were two French priests, Father Jacques Dujarrier and Father Basil Moreau. The family of Holy Cross was born on the north side of the River Loire, between Paris and Brittany, more than 160 years ago. Father Dujarrier's birthplace, Rennes and Grenouille, is in the north. South of Le Mans, are Lenier en Belin, where Basil Moreau was born, and Rouillet sur Loire, where Father Dujarrier served as pastor for more than 30 years. Jacques Francois Dujarrier was born in 1767. He was an average student noted for his piety. He wanted to become a priest, but during his seminary studies at Angers, the French Revolution broke out. A farmer and his wife agreed to hide seminarians at a considerable risk to their own lives. The family had to be constantly alert for police searches. To avoid drawing attention to these guests, food was brought to them in the buckets used for the cattle. Father Dujarrier suffered all his life from rheumatoid arthritis contracted during the extensive time he spent in cold and damp attics, stables, and barns. Father Basile Moreau was born in Ligné en Belin, about eight miles from Le Mans, in a single-story house 
similar to this one, across the street from the parish church. Two stained glass windows, which he donated for the church, show the Holy Cross seal, three hearts above the cross and anchor. From these humble beginnings in rural France, a community was formed whose primary mission was to make God known, loved, and served in the world. Father Dujarie gathered men in an association of brothers to teach in schools. It was their hope to open the hearts and minds to the challenges and promises of Christian faith. Father Moro organized priests to preach the gospel throughout the ravaged priestless parishes of rural France. As advancing age and persistent sickness left Father Dujarie too weak and frail to offer the instruction and encouragement his teachers needed, he turned to the dynamic and charismatic Vasil Moro to take responsibility for their direction. Father Moro soon organized these two associations of dedicated brothers and priests into one religious community known as the Congregation of Holy Cross. He also called together a group of devout women to join them. He wanted his new community to be like the Holy Family of Nazareth. The brothers to be called Josephites, the sisters Marianites, and the priests Salvatorites. In founding the Congregation of Holy Cross, Father Moreau chose as the focus of spirituality for his new community the motto, The Cross, Our Only Hope. One thing that we really need to be aware of with Father Moreau and the Cross is that when crosses came in Father Moreau's life, he always anticipated the blessings that would come with the resurrections. For him, it was one and the same thing and it's uh, the hope of the cross that helped him to keep his passion alive, uh, that keep his vision alive, and keep the community together. He realized that a disheartened, suffering world needed abiding hope in the ultimate triumph of God's love. And for his consecrated religious, Father Moro always exhorted them to find their anchor of hope in the cross of self-sacrifice. Just as Jesus' love brought him face to face with powerful interests that opposed self-emptying love, Basil Moreau taught his religious to put others' needs before their own. Jesus confronted the pain and death that sin inflicts. Father Moreau insisted that is religious do the same. Father Moro founded his congregation of Holy Cross to be a family. He wanted the brothers, priests, and sisters of Holy Cross to model their religious life on the Holy Family of Nazareth. He expected us to express our religious vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience as acquired virtues that would transform us and reveal the living Christ both among us and from within us. He understood our vows as habits of life, habits of the heart, habits of daily behavior, which would form our personalities into the person of Jesus himself. Father Morrow desired ardently that we would conform ourselves to Christ in feeling, thought, word, and deed, so that it would be we who live no longer, but Christ who lives within us. From this simple beginning of a new religious foundation, planted in the small and modest neighborhood in Le Mans, France, called Saint-Croix, a tiny seed of hope began to blossom and expand like a mighty tree developing and increasing in size, scope, and undertakings, spreading far and wide to the ends of the earth.
The constitutions tell us that our mission sends us across borders of every sort. Throughout our history, we've crossed borders, and we have borders to cross today. There have been borders throughout our history, borders of becoming an international congregation, borders of becoming a multicultural congregation, borders of representing different kinds of people around the world, learning their language, learning their hopes and aspirations. And now many people are getting education, so they are coming from different villages, boys and girls are staying in the hostels. We believe that we're trying to put together a community of people that recognize the dignity of each person as a creature of God, as a child of God, and as an image of God. And for that reason, we welcome everybody here. We believe that we all have that same status in light of our faith. The Congregation of Holy Cross consists of sisters, brothers, and priests. And we have uh, all three societies working here at our parish. We've crossed borders because we recognize them as borders. We did not let them become barriers and blockades that we backed away from. They were much more of an invitation than something we saw as insurmountable. We shall develop children who are not only growing intellectually, but children who have a heart. We are about 20,000 members in the Laura Church alone. We've been in Welland for 50 years. We started the high school there. It was the first of nine Catholic high schools in the Niagara region. St. Kevin's is a really wonderful parish. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We're very strong in social justice in the parish. How do you make poor people aware of the fact that, that God loves them when the material conditions in which they live um, don't seem to indicate that? In two parishes now, right at this moment, we have about 16,000 Catholics, about 8,000 here at Jolshotro and 8,000 at Pirgasa. But there are others, a lot of Muslims and Hindus, of course, living in harmony with us. These people are squatters. They, they don't own the land. They've built their houses out of wood and cardboard, as you can see, tin. And uh, they hope for a better place someday. And we, as a church, try to help them survive here and also uh, to try to find a job and get on their feet. What we have here in this home school uh, is basically a project that's meant to help school dropouts. Most of these ladies you see here, young as they are, they have dropped out of school after grade 8 and some in the middle of secondary school. Girls here are again from a number of our villages. We keep them here. They come for one year and it's a chance to learn a number of different things that we hope will be useful to them in the rest of their life. The academic philosophy of Father Moreau offered a vibrant and practical response to the astounding educational challenges in the age of enlightenment. Even though we base our philosophy course on the data of faith, he wrote, we do not wish our students to be ignorant of anything they should know. Father Moreau's decisive legacy of offering a Christian education attuned to the discoveries of the modern sciences and technologies while upholding a vibrant faith in Jesus' gospel is a great gift to the modern world. Jesus was a teacher par excellence. Holy Cross educators strive to teach as Jesus taught. Father Moreau's basic model and foundation for all the ministries of his congregation was found in the example of the compassionate Jesus. 
we have not just an opportunity, but a duty to think and speak and act in ways that will guide, inspire, and heal. Father Moreau told us that Jesus desires to cure all of our miseries, above all, our spiritual sicknesses. In this legacy, we bear in our hearts the suffering of others and offer them Jesus' healing. Historically, Holy Cross has been strong in crossing borders. How about this for crossing a border? Aging and eventual decline in power and position is the reality for some of us. And from what I can see from the published statistics, community statistics, there's a pretty sizable sum of us at that. Aside from providing service of caring, you have to continually learn. The sick and the infirm are the teachers. The congregation, at least one part of the congregation, have to ask the following question. What's an aging community to do? We are a community shaped and guided by the educational mission and the spiritual gifts of the Congregation of Holy Cross, a religious community attempting to answer the call from Jesus to create the kingdom of justice, the kingdom of God here on earth. Holy Cross is a community born from prayer and openness to God's providence and a community that has thrived despite innumerable obstacles and hardships. It is fitting that the community's motto is Spes Unica, the cross our only hope. From the very beginning, with only a handful of men and women at his disposal, Father Morrow sent religious from his young community to diverse parts of the world in a great variety of missions and ministries. We in Holy Cross are proud of our diversity. Our lives in community and our ministries in the church are spent crossing borders of every sort. Borders of language and culture, of personality and custom. But does it not seem that the more borders we cross, the more we become aware of our similarities and not just our differences? Wherever we go, our schools are filled to capacity with those who want to learn from Holy Cross. In this school, most of the students are uh, Muslim. We have very few Christian students. But as a Holy Cross, we want to distribute our good effort to educate all these students and give the Christian values to them. I would challenge our students to seize the opportunity in this place of enormous goodwill and intellectual curiosity to stretch their own cultural boundaries and find out about the cultures of many other people who are also part of the community. I think one of the wonderful things about the Catholic Church is the fact that we are a church that is present around the world and that what uh, happens in one part of the church uh, affects and depends upon what happens in another part of the world. Our hope for future is to free the women of this country and to give the women the confidence they can stand up straight and really know who they are. The school, the program was started in 1982 by the Holy Cross Brothers West Africa District. At that time it was seen that there were a lot of young men who didn't have a good education and they didn't have a skill which they could use to earn a living. It was a clear message that Holy Cross Brothers saw that there was a program of help needed for the underprivileged families living in the area. 
Wherever we go, our churches and parishes are filled with people who want to pray with us. Hermanos, el Señor esté con cada uno de ustedes. Let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Wherever we go, people in need come to us for whatever compassion, assistance, and hope we can give them. This is the Pastoral and Retreat Center. Since there is no center in Dhaka, Archdiocese, so there is a felt need, and mainly the youth of the Dhaka Archdiocese and also from all over Bangladesh have been coming here. How do you help people and accompany people to, to help each other, along with obviously the necessary uh, support and help that, uh, that any group has to receive from others? There are yet creative ways to see the truth that Father Moreau always preached, namely, providence is at work. Providence guides Holy Cross and would have much use yet for Holy Cross wherever we are. I think that's fundamental. We are each called to develop our talents to their full potential and to do all that we can that our neighbor may do the same. Basil Moreau dedicated his life to educating in faith, in hope, and in love. He did so with zeal. He did so through a vision of women and men, clergy and lay people. Catholics and those of other religions who love God, working together to build a kingdom of justice on earth, the Lord's kingdom. We are found as chaplains and pastoral ministers, at bedsides and sick rooms, in hospice homes and around kitchen tables. The sick can be visited, the bereaved can find someone to talk to, someone who will listen. Physical healing has been a part of the ministry of Holy Cross from the very beginning. Victims of war and injustice have always and continue to be recipients of our care and concern. Father Morrow founded the Congregation of Holy Cross with the expectation that its members would perform the ministries of Jesus, praying, teaching, and healing. Throughout the history of Holy Cross, we have had individual religious who have exemplified these ministries of Jesus, of praying and teaching and healing within their own lives. For example, Brother Andre Bissette of Montreal. He is known as the Miracle Man of Montreal. As a young age, Brother Andre was appointed as a doorkeeper at the Collège Notre Dame. Gradually, Brother Andre started to show a very special gift for healing of people, and a lot of people started coming to him. And as he asked God to heal the people, he always used St. Joseph as the intercessor, and he had a great personal devotion to St. Joseph. Another great personality in the history of Holy Cross is Father Patrick Payton, a contemporary, had a great devotion to Mary, the Mother of God. And he asked us to pray the rosary for the unity of the family. The family that prays together, stays together, is more than a catchy slogan. It helps explain why a community value system based only on successful efforts does not last for any effort in the Lord's service will be marred to some degree by disappointment at times, frustrations, disagreements, and the other difficulties caused by human beings working with and for each other. Father Moreau hoped that we too would conform ourselves to Christ and be an image of Christ doing his work in the world. The great mission of Jesus was to teach, to heal, and of course to pray. Jesus emptied himself in order to serve us. We too in Holy Cross wish to empty ourselves so that we can serve others. The charism, the mystique, and the achievements of Holy Cross are personified by the account of Father Morrow as a model for teaching. 
Brother Andre as a model for healing, and Father Peyton as a model for prayer. Members of the congregation and the church have worked diligently for the beatification of these men, and others as well, like Bishop Vincent McCauley for his work among the growing church of East Africa, and Archbishop Theotonius Ganguly, the first native-born Bengali to serve the Church of Bangladesh as bishop. But nothing that any of these men accomplished would have happened if it had not been for their trust in the Lord's providence and guidance, and their realization of the need for support and help from the community to which they belonged. Through this community effort of prayer before the Lord, the signs of a dedicated and apostolic group would become manifest. Not only would the marks of Holy Cross be established in buildings or famous personnel, but a community of friends whose gift from and to each other crystallized their efforts and work into an example of Christian life. Holy Cross is an association of men and women with concern and care for each other, with understanding and patience for the gift of forgiveness, both given and received, and above all for respect and acceptance of every person. Like those who have gone before us, Holy Cross is challenged today to be a community of men and women who are called to teach called to heal, called to pray. We are a community of men and women called to make God known, loved, and served in the world.